According to the Mayas, this world has been destroyed and recreated five times in the past. These beliefs cannot be dismissed as silly superstitions, for in fact, five times in the history of the Earth, our planet was struck by life-destroying meteors and beset by a confluence of catastrophes which caused mass extinctions and the death of most animals on this planet. And not just animals, but entire human civilizations have been repeatedly destroyed. The ancient relics of great but fallen empires are scattered across the face of the Earth. Ancient Rome, Greece, Egypt, Troy, Persia, Babylon, how the mighty have fallen. But before they fell, many told of a golden age, of civilizations and cities even more ancient and grand than their own, a golden age which was wiped from the face of the earth by a confluence of catastrophes that nearly destroyed the world 13,000 years ago, exactly as predicted by the Mayan calendars. The ancient Babylonians identified five of these cities by name. The ancient Egyptians named kings who ruled 15,000 years ago, and the Aztecs, Mayas, and Inca named the gods who ruled this ancient world. The famed Greek philosopher Plato names two of these ancient civilizations which he says existed 9,000 years before his own time. Thirteen thousand years ago, North America was a beautiful, bountiful country. The glaciers were in retreat, and in Canada and large swaths of the United States, the melting glaciers formed a dam around this giant inland sea, preventing a runoff into the Atlantic. Giant bears, giant beavers, horses, ground sloths, the saber-toothed tiger and mammoth roamed the plains. Where great cities were flourishing in the southern latitudes, hunters and gatherers lived in great villages stalking the wild game. As reported in 2007 at the American Geophysical Union, a huge comet, 2.5 miles across, exploded above North America, melting the huge glacial ice sheets, causing massive flooding and a frigid drop in the Earth's temperature, killing an unknown number of people and wiping out and causing the extinction of 35 large species of mammal, including the giant mammoths. According to nuclear scientist Richard Firestone of the U.S. Department of Energy, this comet was just one among tens of thousands of comet-like missiles which were sent hurtling towards the Earth, remnants of a distant star which exploded in a vast supernova 41,000 years ago. These meteor storms were accompanied by a hail of cometary bullets which struck the Earth, machine gunning innumerable animals and humans with iron-rich grains traveling at 10,000 kilometers per second. When this giant comet exploded above North America, these natural glacial dams melt and burst, and enormous quantities of cold, fresh water drained into the North Atlantic in a deluge. This had the effect of shutting down the normal circulation of the ocean's cooling cycle, where warm water and cool water are mixed in the North Atlantic and the Gulf Current. Surface water turned frigid, and temperatures plummeted, and ocean levels rose by up to 400 feet, causing massive flooding and the destruction of all civilizations worldwide. Those striking the ocean sent plumes of mist and water into the air, which fell in torrential rains, whereas those striking the earth set up plumes of smoke and debris, blocking the sun and sending temperatures plummeting. The climate of much of the world was altered within seconds, and innumerable animals were flash frozen even as they ate. Woolly mammoths and other animals have been found frozen solid with gravel in their lungs and grass in their mouths and food in their belly. Carcasses dated from 13,000 years ago. As is evident from their diet and the food in their mouths, these calamitous events took place in the most inviting of environments, which just moments before had been warm, lush, and teeming with life. These animals were flash frozen alive as they ate and inhaled cometary debris. Humans in affected areas were completely obliterated. Up to 75% of the population of North America alone were killed. Indeed, the oldest records and accounts passed down through history tell the same tragic tale. 
These great kingdoms and city-states were completely obliterated and washed away by violent earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, and a terrifying cosmological event symbolized by a great serpent. The earth shook, sea levels rose, cities and great expanses of land fell beneath the waves, leaving only distant memories of a long-lost golden age. The ancient Mayas, the Aztecs, Egyptians, Babylonians, and Jews all placed the blame on a great cosmic serpent which snaked through the heavens and then attacked the earth. There is now conclusive evidence from the geological and historical record that around 13,000 years ago the earth was struck by as many as a dozen comets and asteroids and our planet was buffeted by a confluence of catastrophes including terrible earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, the sudden melting of the huge glaciers in North America, all followed by massive floods and then a worldwide Arctic winter that lasted over a thousand years. These giant meteors and stars attacked in swarms over 13,000 years ago, striking the Middle East and leaving still visible craters over two miles wide. Others struck North and South America in a cluster, some striking what is today Argentina. The earth shook, volcanoes erupted, cities fell and were buried in debris, and then the earth itself opened up and swallowed what remained. slammed into the oceans of the earth, creating tidal waves over three miles high, and sea levels rose by 400 feet, thus destroying the cities and the civilizations of woman and man. shook, sea levels rose, cities and great expanses of land fell beneath the waves. This planet-wide catastrophe was also predicted by the Mayan calendars. Like the ancient Egyptians, Babylonians, and Hebrews, the Mayans placed responsibility for this horrific cosmic catastrophe on a great plumed astral body which snaked through the sky and then fell from the heavens and attacked the earth. 
Indeed, this calamity made such a profound impression on the survivors of North America that they erected huge serpent mounds, miles in length, in the process of attacking and swallowing the earth. Naturally, a calamity of this scale, followed by a thousand-year Arctic winter and massive drought, made much of the civilized world uninhabitable. Ancient cities were blown and washed away, buried beneath the snow, and those which survived were abandoned when lush oases were transformed into sand and desert. Twelve thousand years of looting and time has wiped away almost all evidence of these technologically advanced civilizations, with two major exceptions. The Great Sphinx of Ancient Egypt and the lost city of Tiwanaku in what is today Bolivia, South America. The ancient city and lost civilization of Tiwanaku was founded over 15,000 years ago and according to legend, abandoned when the earth was attacked by a cosmic serpent. The architecture of Tiwanaku is that of a technologically sophisticated people who understood advanced mathematics, astronomy and architecture and who had devised their own calendar. Monuments, many carved out of a single titanic stone, are covered with powerful and intricately carved geometric designs and are decorated with stone heads arranged in complex mathematical patterns. According to the elaborately carved symbols found on several great monuments, including an enormous 45-ton piece of stone carved out of a single block of granite, this ancient city was founded 18,000 years ago. The ten-ton gateway of the sun is monolithic, cut from a single block of granite. Its upper portion is carved with beautiful and intricate cosmic designs. At its center, the sun god, Via Cocho, holds two cosmic serpents in his hand as the rays of the sun radiate from his face in all directions. Via Cocho was a sun god who was represented as wearing the sun for a crown with tears descending from his eyes as rain. Via Cocho made the earth, the stars, the sky, and mankind, but his creations were destroyed by a great flood when attacked by cosmic serpents. Viacocho eventually disappeared across the Pacific Ocean, but according to legend, Viacocho will reappear in the heavens accompanied by angelic warriors to again do battle when the cosmic serpent returns. Our Earth is tilted and orbits the Sun in a line called the plane of the ecliptic. The Earth is currently tilted to an angle of around 23 degrees. Astronomical calculations as to the tilt of the Earth and where the temples faced when the sun rose on the solstice and equinox have confirmed Tiwanaku's ancient pedigree. The Earth spins at a rate of 1,000 miles per hour and orbits the sun at over 66,000 miles per hour. These centrifugal forces causes the equator to bulge like the outer rim of a spinning top. And like a spinning top, the Earth tilts and wobbles as it orbits. Thus, as it spins, its angle of tilt slowly oscillates back and forth between 22 degrees and 24 degrees, a cycle that takes roughly 41,000 years to complete. The solar year is divided into four seasons, marked by the summer and winter solstice on June 22nd and December 22nd, and the equinox during the fall and the spring. The four seasons, marked by the solstice and equinox, forms a cross, thereby giving the cross cosmic significance. Ancient peoples believed the solstice and equinox were holy days, and they erected great temples and monuments facing the rising sun on these specific anniversaries. For the last 2,160 years, the sun has risen in the house of Pisces in the spring and Virgo in the fall. Because of the changing tilt of the Earth and a phenomena referred to as the precession of the equinox, the position of the Sun on these holy days slowly shifts over time. Specifically, because of centrifugal forces slowing the movement of the Earth as it orbits around the Sun, the Earth slips backwards in time, like the hands of a backward ticking clock, and loses one degree every 72 years. Thus, due to precession and the changing tilt of the Earth, the position of the sun on the days of the solstice and equinox changes over thousands of years of time. Therefore, the major temples of Tiwanaku are currently out of alignment with the rising sun. According to the calculations of Professor Pranowski, who excavated the city of Tiwanaku, these temples were properly oriented to the rising sun when the earth was tilted at an angle of 23 degrees, 8 minutes, and 48 seconds. The last time the Earth assumed this angle of orientation was 15,000 BC. 
These conclusions have been verified by numerous experts and astronomers. Thus, these astronomical calculations correspond with the calendar created by these people, indicating this great city was erected over 17,000 years ago, a civilization, according to legend, that was wiped out by a cosmic catastrophe 13,000 years ago, a calamity which the survivors associate with the cosmic serpent which coils around the galaxy and which will someday again attack the Earth. This worldwide catastrophe is remembered by ancient civilizations across the world, many of which employ similar symbols to describe it. A great serpent, sometimes depicted as coiling round the tree of life, a crossroads symbolized by a cosmic cross and the key of life. The ancient Egyptians also attribute the destruction of these ancient cities and civilizations with the cosmic serpent, Apep. Apep was the personification of all that was evil. Apep hid in the underworld and brought chaos and darkness to the earth. Apep was associated with the Milky Way galaxy and circled the cosmos, engaging in an endless cycle of attack. and a galactic cosmic serpent appears in ancient Egyptian texts and reliefs painted on the walls of ancient Egyptian temples and tombs, surrounded by the twelve constellations that we still recognize today. The great spiraling serpent not only signifies a galaxy, but the road to the underworld, the road to the dead, the road to non-existence. As in the ancient civilization of Tiwanaku, the Egyptian sun god was expected to battle the cosmic serpent to save the people of the earth. Worship of the sun is a custom that was embraced by most cultures throughout history. The sun, like the twelve constellations, was viewed as a god. During the course of a solar year, the sun passes through each constellation which lies along the ecliptic every thirty days much like the hands of a clock marking the 12 hours of a day. As the Earth orbits the Sun, it forms an imaginary circle referred to as the ecliptic. There is, however, a second, an outer circle which is ringed with stars that form the 12 constellations of the zodiac. The 12 constellations, although differing in size, are evenly spaced, occupying positions in the heavens that can be likened to the numbers on the face of a clock. During the course of a solar year, the sun passes through each constellation which lies along the ecliptic every 30 days, much like the hands of a clock marking the 12 hours of a day. To honor the sun god, ancient peoples oriented their temples and monuments to face the rising sun on one of the four days believed to have cosmic significance, on the morning of the first day of summer, winter, spring, or fall, also known as the winter and summer solstice, and the spring and fall equinox. For the last 2,160 years, the sun has risen in the constellation of Pisces on the first day of spring, the vernal equinox, and in the constellation of Virgo on the first day of fall. Thus we see that the birth of Jesus is associated with Pisces, the two fish, and Virgo, the virgin. Due to centrifugal forces which influence and slows the Earth's orbit around the Sun, on the days of the equinox and solstice, the rising Sun seems to slowly change position relative to the constellations, like the backward ticking of a clock. Because the Earth slows by one degree every 72 years, over a period of 2,160 years, it moves backwards by 30 degrees, and therefore the Sun begins to rise in a different constellation on the morning of the equinox and solstice. This is known as the procession of the equinox. 
At present, the sun rises in Pisces and Virgo on the spring and fall equinox. However, beginning around 2200 BC, and for the next 2160 years, on the morning of the spring equinox, the sun rose in the constellation of Aries, the Ram. Therefore, in ancient Egypt, during the age of the Ram, the Egyptians worshipped the Ram and numerous statues and monuments were dedicated to the Ram God. Thus, whereas Jesus is associated with the age of Pisces, Egyptian kings, most notably King Ramesses, were associated with the constellation of Aries, the Ram, and numerous statues of the Ram God, including those protectively surrounding the image of Ramesses, were erected throughout Egypt and as guardians of his temple and mortuary complex. Ramesses' magnificent temples and tomb were built to face the rising sun in the house of Ares on the first day of spring. Because of precession, and as this cosmic clock ticks backwards, beginning around 4400 BC and until 2200 BC, the sun rose in the constellation of Taurus on the morning of the spring equinox. Therefore, we see that bulls were worshipped as gods in ancient Egypt during this time, the age of the bull. Temples and mortuary art depicted the god Taurus, whereas Egyptian kings and the gods of other peoples were represented as and associated with powerful bulls and thus Taurus. We see this even in the Jewish Bible. Therefore, around the year 2200 BC, as the age of Aries began, people around the world stopped paying homage to Taurus, the bull, but began to worship the god Aries. Thus, we see in the Jewish Bible that Abraham, in accepting his god, sacrificed a ram to Jehovah instead of sacrificing his son Isaac. Likewise, Moses had to introduce a new god to the Hebrews during the age of Aries and was forced to destroy a golden calf made by his people. During the age of Taurus, Egyptian kings and the Egyptian people also paid homage to Osiris, who was linked to the constellation of Orion. Osiris, the great cosmic god of the afterlife, had once been a king of Egypt and ruled during a golden age before the great catastrophe which destroyed much of the world. According to legend, Osiris was murdered by 72 conspirators led by his brother Set. Set was the god of storms and destruction and brought calamity to Egypt. Osiris, therefore, was a king of Egypt whose rule ended when the world was struck by a cosmic calamity associated with Set and the great serpent, Apep. Thus we see that slate palettes during the age of Taurus depicts the constellation of Taurus and link the king of Egypt to the constellation of Orion and the god king Osiris who ruled during the Golden Age. The Narmer plate, which is crowned on both sides by the bull Taurus, and the image of the king which is linked to the constellation of Orion has been dated to 3100 BC by some Egyptologists, which is well within the age of Taurus. Others believe the Narmer plate was fashioned in 4468 BC in commemoration of the spring equinox and the beginning of the age of Taurus and the ending of the age of Gemini, the twins, hence the twin bulls. 
clearly a cosmological connection is made between the transition of one cosmic age, that of Gemini, to another cosmic age, that of Taurus. These ancient kings of Egypt were directly linked to the constellation of Orion, thus to a great king who lived and died before the last cataclysm which destroyed the cities of woman and man. In fact, the scribes of ancient Egypt tell us that the first kings of Egypt established their rule 15,400 years ago. As the Egyptian civilization prospered and grew, and with the coming of the new age of Leo 13,000 years ago, the ancient Egyptians erected a great sphinx and possibly even the three great pyramids of Giza, all of which still stand today. The Sphinx, which has the body of a lion, the king of beasts, is believed to have also been crowned with the head of a lion, just as the statues of the bull and the ram have the heads of a bull and a ram. However, the original lion head became so badly eroded over eons of time that it was recarved several times and finally reshaped into the head of a pharaoh. Although the original nature of the head is debatable, that the Sphinx has the body of a lion and was erected to face the rising sun on the day of the spring equinox is undeniable. 13,000 years ago, and for the next 2,000 years, the sun rose in the constellation of Leo, the lion, the king of beasts, on the morning of the equinox. The Sphinx was designed to greet the rising sun in the house of Leo over 13,000 years ago. Moreover, the Sphinx suffered most of its erosion when inundated by torrential rains and a great flood over 13,000 years ago. Thus, the Sphinx provides additional physical evidence of an ancient, technologically advanced civilization that existed almost 13,000 years ago during the age of Leo. As first discovered by Egyptologist R.A. Schwaller, the erosion of the Sphinx is quite different from the erosion observable on other structures in ancient Egypt. On the back and upper portions of the Sphinx and its nearby walls, the rock is badly worn, edges are rounded, and deep up and down vertical fissures are prominent, conditions usually created not by wind, but water and torrential rains. By contrast, the erosion seen on the Old Kingdom tombs is completely different in character and typical of wind and sand. These observations were later verified by Egyptologist John Anthony West and geologist Robert Schock, who concluded that the vertical fissures were indicative of severe water erosion and were caused by a long period of torrential rainfall or severe flooding which raised water levels to the very head of the Sphinx, with the waves lapping at the shoulder and face. In fact, most of the erosion is not at the base or the walls of the Sphinx, but at the top of the back and neck. This makes sense as the body of the Sphinx was buried beneath the shifting sands for much of history and would have been protected from the ravages of rain and flood whereas the head, back and shoulders were continually exposed. Thus it appears that the Great Sphinx was erected almost 13,000 years ago during the age of Leo and suffered a great deal of erosion when exposed to torrential rains and a great flood. It has also been claimed that the three titanic pyramids of Giza were constructed over 12,000 years ago. Although there are claims and counterclaims regarding who built the three pyramids of Giza, even the ancient kings of Egypt refer to them as being quite ancient. In fact, although the grandest and oldest of them is attributed to Khufu, based on an obvious forgery and even a misspelling of his name, Khufu indicates that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx had been constructed long before his own time. Khufu's funeral boat was not found in the pyramid, but buried outside clear evidence that the Great Pyramid was never intended to be Khufu's final resting place, but a pyramid belonging to another, more ancient king. The Great King Osiris is associated with the constellation of Orion. Osiris may have been the last king of Egypt before the Great Catastrophe some 13,000 years ago. The pyramid complex is also oriented to the constellation of Orion. In fact, the layout and orientation of the three Great Pyramids of Egypt are a mirror image of the three main belt stars of Orion. However, they match not where the belt stars are located today, but the positions they occupied 13,000 years ago during the age of Leo. 
Indeed, not just the Earth, but our solar system, our galaxy, and the stars and constellations are in motion and change position over time. Most authorities agree that these first three titanic pyramids were constructed first, well before the erection of all other Egyptian pyramids. However, what has puzzled the experts is the fact that the first three pyramids are not only many times larger, but have a degree of perfection not seen in all subsequent pyramids, over a hundred of which are known to have been constructed during and following the reigns of the third dynasty some 4,500 years ago. Indeed, the pyramids created by specific pharaohs beginning during the third dynasty are stunted, lopsided, poorly constructed miniaturizations in comparison to the three great pyramids of Egypt. This is exactly opposite to what would be expected. Improvement in design and increases in size should appear in later copies, but this is not the case. All subsequent pyramids are stunted, tiny and puny in size and poorly constructed in comparison. Coupled with their incredible size and utter perfection, and other significant differences already noted, legend leads credence to the possibility that the three great pyramids of Giza were built by a different, technologically advanced civilization almost 13,000 years ago, and that later inferior pyramids were created 8,000 years later, some 4,000 years ago. Some ancient Arabian historians explain that these first three pyramids, which exceed all other pyramids in size and perfection, were created in anticipation of the great flood and calamity which the ancient Egyptians realized might destroy much of the world. Basing their conclusions on ancient manuscripts, ancient historians have reported that before the great flood, the king of Egypt decided to secure the treasures of all ancient wisdom. The king built the pyramids to preserve the records of all the profoundest sciences, the hidden wisdom of the ages, which were engraved in tablets and memorials which were stored within the great pyramids and made secure. According to one Arab historian who wrote in 1584, Sarid, one of the kings of Egypt prior to the great flood, was the builder of two of the great pyramids. Sarid had a dream where the earth turned upside down with all his people. The people fled in a blind rush and the stars fell down. All the king's advisors apparently had the same dream and predicted the end of civilization. So Sarid, the pre-diluvial king of Egypt, decided to build the pyramids in order to serve as a great museum and library where all the world's knowledge could be preserved. Indeed, the Great Pyramid itself was to be a source of knowledge and wisdom, harboring the answers to all questions regarding the cosmos and creation. In fact, the Great Pyramid contains a number of chambers, one on top of the other, similar to many university libraries. However, there is basically no evidence to suggest it was ever meant to serve as a tomb for an Egyptian king on his journey to the afterlife. As all who visit or have studied these grand monuments can attest, the three pyramids are not just the oldest, grandest, largest, and architecturally superior to all those that came after, but they are completely un-Egyptian. Unlike all other Egyptian edifices, the chambers and inner walls of the three great pyramids of Giza are completely barren of hieroglyphics and are lacking in any markings whatsoever. Typically, all Egyptian works, from 6,000 years ago to the end of their civilization, are covered with symbols, artistic renderings, and hieroglyphics. Not so the Great Pyramid. The interiors are completely barren. Moreover, the three pyramids are unique in that the interiors not only lack ornamentation, but there is no evidence of torchlight within the inner chambers. No smoke, no soot, no ash, Nothing to indicate how the interiors were lighted. Nothing except drawings of what appear to be giant electric lights and the discovery of an ancient electric battery. According to Plato and the ancient priests of Egypt, we know nothing of what happened in ancient times because of these great destructions and pestilences from heaven that comes pouring down and which leaves few survivors and because after many generations, the survivors of that destruction die, leaving no written word. Now, these memories are myths. Be it memory or myth, ancient peoples from throughout the world all speak of a horrific cosmic cataclysm which destroyed the cities and civilizations of woman and man, and most blame the end of this golden age on a cosmic serpent. 